So honestly speaking, we're all dealing with different emotions. Some can feel incredibly overwhelming and we're not sure what to do in that moment. It's as if the emotion is in charge and we're not. It's one of the things that I've experienced a lot with anxiety um, and I also shared with my sister yesterday on Skype uh, what that experience has meant for me. Also she is having experiences and what I call a classroom around anxiety. And if I choose to, to allow the anxiety to become my teacher instead of only being hijacked by it over and over again, I begin to listen into that moment. I'm willing to, to be taught by what she is telling me. So who is she that speaks in me? What kind of experiences is it that I carry with me that are still hijacking me, that are still taking completely over? But I find in, in, in the work of consciousness, in the work of, of waking up to more of me, if I understand why that little person in me speaks like that. If I'm curious enough about her story, I can go to her, I can explore the moment with her when she's there, you know, then it's not just anxiety that I'm overwhelmed by, but it's actually this little person that tirelessly has tried to connect with me over years. And it took me a long time to to actually understand that she's just wanting to tell me her story. She's just wanting comfort and she's she's stuck in this old reality. It's all she knows. So it's been incredibly helpful just to learn to take a step back and to host the feeling, to give space for it, to allow to feel it and to get a little bit more in contact with her. And the moment we do that we can begin to help her expand into more knowledge. I often call it that that the first chapters we write very early in our life becomes the first 50 chapters and that's very often what we base our doing, our thinking, everything on. But we can write new chapters and we continue to do so. But sometimes we forget to give her our early experience, the memo <clears throat> of the new things that we learn, the new knowledge that we have. So it's important that when she gives you a call, when she's on the phone, when the emotions, you feel the that you're reactive and that's her, that you begin to, to see her, catch her in that moment. I'm not my anxiety. That's not who I am. It's an important part of my experience. It is very, very important for me <clears throat> to dive in, to, to understand more of it, to give it meaning, to begin to harvest in that field. Because the field has so much richness but right now it's still left in a place of pain, of wounding, and of misunderstanding. You know that a great part of healing that we do in TRI, part of our self-healing and self-guidance, is that when I go back and I begin to understand the importance of every experience I've had, I set them free and I allow these experiences to, to turn into tools that become part of my journey today, my journey of passing it on. And you might understand what that means in terms of you've had experiences and you've met somebody who's gone through something similar. And in that moment, because of your own experience, you've been able to build a bridge to that other person. And it's often in these deep experiences that we begin to share connection, we begin to deepen ourselves with other people. So experiences we have, even the most hurtful ones, are never wasteful. They're just left in a place of misunderstanding because you have not unpacked the gift of that experience yet.